Okay, so today we have Decades by Joy Division. Uh, this is the uh, 2007 remastered version, if that makes any difference. Um, so yeah, uh, suddenly I had a few requests for this uh, song, and uh, I swore I thought I listened to it before, I thought I reacted to it, but uh, apparently not. So here we go. Uh, I'm always, you know, uh, intrigued or whatever. I'm always happy to get back into Joy Division and listen to songs I have not heard. So this is a little over six minutes, so let's get into it, talk about it after. And let's just, you know, hear that freaking Joy Division sound. Oh, Lord. Quite the opening. Electronic drums. Watch from the wings as the seas were replayed. We saw ourselves now as we never had seen. The trail of the drama and degeneration. The sorrows we suffered. We're inside, now our hearts lost forever Can't replace the fear or the thrill of the chase These rituals showed up the door for our wanderings Open and shut and slammed in our face
um, yes, Joy Division, decades, um, so yeah, like I said, uh, yeah, not listen to that, um, like I thought I did or something, did a reaction, but I did not, um, I mean, <laughs> it's just, I mean, it's quintessential Joy Division, I mean, it's, uh, at this point, uh, from so many songs I've listened to them, or listened to by them, um, this is what you come to expect, this is like, I mean, just obviously, you know, <laughs> just saying like, oh, Ian's baritone vocals, it's like, wow, they really shine here. Uh, it's just like, yeah, I mean, that's basically, I mean, what you expect. Um, and, uh, you know, just, I mean, just so low and just how he's, you know, especially with the chorus, you know, when he's saying, where have they been? It's just kind of eerie. It's just kind of like, especially, um, I mean, it's almost October now, I guess, you know, getting them the, that uh, spooky season, as people say, I guess. Um, but uh, yeah, just so eerie and just so deep and low it's just like and also just you know the slow tempo that he's like singing at it's just very kind of I wouldn't say scary whatever because it's like oh I'm not scared but it's just like you know you just like I said I guess it's just kind of an eerie feeling um like I don't know if Joy Division I guess you know uh what I want to say uh you know I know they're post-punk I know there's other post-punk bands uh you know kind of they're kind of gothic as well I guess you could say uh I don't know if they kind of originated this kind of sound that they're doing uh with like the synthesizers and uh what was the other uh because i know ian was playing another kind of a pump organ kind of a harmonica harmonica thing uh the melodica i want to pronounce it as uh so yeah just i don't know uh which i don't even really know how to you know point in on what i'm trying to say but like i guess just the sound uh i don't know i've never heard somebody uh sound like joy division i guess except for maybe new order obviously um but uh, yeah, it's just like, uh, just that kind of eerie, especially, you know, just kind of the screeching synthesizers. I mean, just making the song sound even more cold uh, than what Ian's voice is already doing for it. And uh, like I said as well, uh, at the start with Steve, uh, Stephen Morris on uh, drums, uh, it says here on the personnel, it was electric drums he was playing here, uh, which I guess I said at the start as well. And then Peter Hook on bass guitar, obviously. And, uh, I mean, just, I mean, Hook, I mean, I just, I actually, before I watched, or before I listened to this, I watched an interview with him, uh, where he was talking about this album closer, and, uh, I don't know, just hearing, because I've never actually really watched an interview, uh, of either of them, really, uh, from the band, and, uh, just, sit, like, hearing him talk about, you know, Ian's illness, I guess, and, uh, that they had no idea, like, you know, you didn't really think about it, especially because it was 1980, I guess, you know, mental, mental illness wasn't, you know, at the forefront, uh, kind of like it's trying to be now, and, uh, yeah, it's just like, you, did, you didn't know, it's just like, but, like, hearing Ian sing this now, it's just like, you know, I guess 40 years later, uh, since his passing, or 41 years, I guess, uh, yeah, I mean, again, it's just, it's things I've said before, but, you know, you get a different kind of a feel, I mean, especially if you were in the band, obviously, especially if you were Peter Hook, and of course, uh, <laughs> I hate saying his name because people say they like how, uh, I guess, Americans and Canadians say Bernard, but, uh, Bernard Subner, uh, as apparently also as, uh, Peter calls him, Barney, so I might just call him Barney, just because uh, I hate saying Bernard, uh, anyway, but yeah, him, obviously, on, uh, guitar, and, uh, you know, I mean, it's just, the band was so good, and uh, he was doing the synthesizers as well. Uh, and of course, I mean, lead, lead vocals uh, is Ian Curtis. And uh, yeah, it's just like, you know, these four gentlemen, you could say. Uh, I mean, nobody could touch them at that point from 1978 to 1980. It was just like, and I don't think they were, you know, especially with, I guess, what they were singing about, you know, 1978 to 1980, uh, post-punk. I mean, there's people that listen to post-punk, obviously, but I feel like people probably wanted to listen to more happy, you know, happier songs or happier bands. Uh, I think of, like, the Cars or just anyone from the New Wave movement, maybe the Talking Heads. Uh, even though the Talking Heads had some uh, kind of disappointing songs as well and such, but, like, yeah, just, I mean, Joy Division sound is just, like, you gotta be ready to uh, <laughs> to listen to uh, their sound because it just, like, might uh, make you cry or something. Um but uh, yeah, I mean, uh, I guess just to get into the song now, uh, after talking about what I thought about it, um, hold the phone. I just wanted to double check uh, what the annotations on Genius here, Genius.com, are saying about the song. Uh, so we got the first verse, uh, you know, just, I mean, here's an annotation. Uh, but it talks about, you know, I guess what the first verse is basically about war. Uh, I feel like I said war weird there. Uh, but the effects of war, uh, especially on young men who are, you know, they're who are forced to fight it, uh, and it goes on, generally speaking, the majority of soldiers in historic wars uh, were young men, sometimes as young as 16, um, and I think there was probably even younger people who 
you know, said they were older than that to get, to get if they wanted to go to the war. I've heard those stories as well. Um, anyway, uh, called upon by their leaders to risk their lives and commit horrible acts against their enemies with the fate of their nation potentially dependent on it. And of course, you know, I mean, war, you think of death, you think of, I mean, desolation. I mean, <laughs> you think of kind of what Joy Division uh, is all about. Um, but, uh, you know, I didn't know if that was, if the song was about war, but I've seen other people talk about it uh, from the comments and such on YouTube. But I, I guess that's what he's talking about. I just didn't want to, you know, say that this was about war if it wasn't. But anyway, uh, so yeah, you know, just talking about here are the young men, the weight on their shoulders. I mean, like it said, yeah, you get a lot of weight on your shoulders to win the war for your country, I guess. I hear the young men, well, where have they been? We knocked in the doors of hell's darker chamber. And I mean, yeah, I mean, war probably feels a lot like hell. Uh, pushed to the limit, we dragged ourselves in. I like that because, you know, pushed to, to the limit, uh, you know, I feel like we dragged ourselves in to hell's darker chamber, maybe, uh, you know, attaching from what he said earlier there. Uh, watched from the wings as the scenes were, were playing. We saw ourselves now as we never had seen. I mean, I'm just thinking of, yeah, just, you know, so many images of, you know, of war, so many images of tragedy from war. I mean, you, you see these kind of, you know, horrific images of, you know, I guess men, women, whatever, uh, from so many years ago. It's just like, good Lord, uh, I couldn't imagine being in, that situation, um, portrayal of the trauma and de degeneration, uh, the sores we suffered and never were free. And I mean, just that, you know, the sores we suffered never were free. I mean, just, uh, we were never free there. It's just a good Lord. And then he goes on with the chorus. Where have they been? Where have they been? Like I said, you know, just kind of that haunting feel I get from Ian's voice, especially with how low and how slow he's singing it, uh, which is nothing new. Um, and then with the second verse, weary inside, now our hearts lost forever, can't replace the fear or the thrill of the chase. Each ritual showed up uh, at the door for our wanderings, uh, open the shut, open then shut, then slammed in our face. Uh, so there is an annotation here. Um, in many cases, soldiers find it difficult to adjust to civilian life after uh, because of the traumas. I mean, obviously, I mean, you think PTSD, uh, their innocence uh, tarnished by the horrors they have witnessed. Uh, many ex-servicemen from the two world wars were diagnosed with shell shock or what is now known as PTSD. Um, in case of in the case of Ian, uh, the sentiment is a more general general one about growing up and getting disillusioned about life and then growing uh, with depression uh, as he got older. So yeah, I mean, uh, it always comes back to kind of that feel, you know, kind of that uh, uh, you know Ian's depression, I guess. And uh, I guess kind of how he's, you know, come, I wouldn't say he's comparing it to war because I mean, you know, uh, you know, I mean, Ian didn't go through to a war or anything like that, but he's kind of talking about war. I just like, I guess it's just like, um, you know, the lyricism here, just the message, I guess, the meaning of the song. Uh, I didn't know. Yeah, just listening to it. I didn't know that it was going to be about war. Uh, but uh, yeah, and there's an image here on a uh, genius and it's just like, you know, uh, an older soldier, like talking to a younger soldier that's crying. It's just like, you know, that's, those are the images that, you know, get stuck in my head at least. And then I think like, good Lord, like, again, I couldn't imagine, you know, being 16 and it's just like, uh, you know, shooting enemies or whatever. It's just like seeing blood, seeing dead bodies, seeing, I mean, you know, poison gas and what all this stuff. I mean, good Lord, could not imagine that. And then of course, um, depression. I mean, I, I know, uh, that depression, like it said, can come from war, or I mean, it can come from anything in your in your life, really, uh, any kind of depression. Uh, but again, with like you know going to war and then coming back and trying to you know live like a normal life is just like you've seen so much shit, as they say. It's just like it's hard to be like, oh, you know, I'm just gonna you know go about my day now and not think about you know the dead bodies I've seen or the people screaming and uh, the blood and all this stuff. It's just, <laughs> I mean, it's not it's not easy to come back to. I can really, yeah, I can really see that. And, uh, and then how the chorus, you know, ends song and, uh, then Ian stops singing and then they kind of have a little bit of an instrumental, uh, kind of reminds me of like, well, kind of is a teaser, I guess you would say of what new order, uh, would become there. Uh, you know, kind of he, Ian just lets, uh, the band go and, uh, it's just like, yeah, this just a chilling song. I mean, good. What else can you say? I mean, good Lord. I feel like I'm, uh, you know, uh, you know, not 
what's the word? I, you know, just saying it's a chilling song does not feel like I'm giving it justice. It's just like, yeah, uh, it's a hard listen, especially because I've seen, I did see some comments, you know, talking about this. And, you know, you have to like be in a certain kind of a mood to listen to this, uh, to like, you know, try to listen to it all the way. And especially if you're like, you know, for, if you've lived through the war, if you were in the war, uh, any war, I guess you would say. Um, yeah, this is probably an especially hard listen if uh, you know the message of the song. Anyway, I guess that's about it. I mean, this this is a 17 minute video already. Good God. Anyway, uh, thanks for watching. Thanks for liking, subscribing. Uh, I mean, I've never really even uh, thought about it, but I guess I would say Joy Division. This is just uh, one of my own uh, realizations right now. Uh, Joy Division would have to be one of my favorite bands at this point. Uh, of all time, um, but anyway, uh, <laughs> yeah, just the realization I'm having now, it's just like, I just love uh, their sound so much, um, each member was so prominent, and uh, yeah, anyway, thanks for watching again, uh, thanks for subscribing, commenting, liking, all that stuff, really appreciate all the support, uh, I got, what, I'm like 100, I think, subscribers from like 2000 now, which is nuts, and uh, I just, yeah, I really appreciate um, every subscriber I get. That's crazy. Anyway, thanks for watching again. I'll finally end this video and, uh, talk to you guys again soon.